Welcome back everybody, Thomas Pollock here, Profile Tree, doing another tutorial on editing in Premiere Pro for films. And this is probably one of the last, this will be the last chapter and we'll look at rendering, how to use media encoder if you have it, and just brush up on a couple of the other things that we might not have covered during this series. And this is a guide for short filmmaking. And there are lots of other things to know in Premiere that a lot of things you could go into more depth with, especially like if you have other plugins. But for the time being, this is uh, wrapping up stuff now if you have got to the end of making your film and how to actually make it into a file. And depending where you're putting the file, you know, you can render it differently. And depending on the footage that you have, there are settings that uh, are more recommended. So we'll just go ahead and jump in. So before I get into rendering, I'll just open up the sequence settings again just to give you as a reminder of how you can start to set up. So say if I want to make a new one, I'll show you a little bit more about all these different settings. You can set it, you can start to put in, say you want to just open up 10 tracks uh, and add some more audio tracks. And you want to change the kind of track it is, you know, usually just keep it the standard. Um, if, if, you, if you are editing on surround sound and you've recorded it properly, you can hit 5.1. Keep it all standard. So say you have seven audio layers that you want to have just on the get-go, you can do that. You can create 10 tracks. In the settings, editing mode, DSLR. Now, this really depends on the camera you're recording on. As you can see, it's got different different settings for certain cameras. Like, there's Sony, uh, the Canon XF, ABC HD for, you know, camcorders. And then you have the red for if you're using the Red Dragon or something like that. Then you have DSLR, which can be anything from Canon to Sony or any any other DSLR. And that's what we've shot on. And you'll see the time base here. And there's 23.976. And on DSLRs, most DSLRs, unless it states so, is recording at 23.976. Not exactly 24 as the 24 frames per second film uh, frame rate. And it's important here to, to check these. Um, your aspect ratio, keep it at 1.0. If you start doing these, you'll see what happens. And the frame size, depending on your footage, just make it match the way you've recorded it. Or if you have other plans, do whatever you want. Display format, uh, that's for the time code. So that'll be in your timeline. It's good to keep it to the way you've recorded it. So yeah, using that time code to make it more accurate. Audio quality, you can leave that the way it is. Uh, display format, you can do it in samples or milliseconds. Uh, milliseconds is probably better. Maximum bit depth and maximum render quality is usually what you want. Uh, to try and get the best out of your image, and then you can name your sequence. And in sequence presets, there's plenty of them again uh, for the kind of footage that you have. And you tend not to need to tweak anything really whenever you create one. And then you just hit OK, and it will create your file. Simple as that. So let's say we are satisfied with what we have and we want to export it and render it into a file for YouTube, Vimeo, or just onto your computer. So you can create your in and out points like I have here, and you can set it to render just the in and out points. So say if you wanted to just do a preview, you know, you could do that and then export it. Another thing you can't do while I'm here discussing that, if you, um, what's what you'll notice sometimes if you've put lots of effects on your, your video, uh, it may start to lag. If you create an in and an out point and hit enter, it can pre-render. And if you also go to the sequence, you can uh, render into out and it'll do that and render it out for you. And it means you'll be able to display it. So you'll see up here where it's yellow, um, where it's red, that means that part is not uh, rendered out and it's more likely to play slow. Yellow is okay. Usually um, it comes up green to show that it has been pre-rendered but the computer is handling the footage okay so it doesn't make a difference okay so coming back to uh the files so let's say we're happy enough with our film uh if we hit Control m that's a shortcut to export or we can go, go to file export and hit media that brings up all our settings here so you've got format and, uh, you know, you could spend a whole day just looking at every single format. Usually I wouldn't go anywhere beyond MP4, WMV, QuickTime, and H.264, which is a codec. And, um, you know, you can start looking all, up all those things as well to if you really want to, <clears throat> to get an understanding of file formats. 
And as you can see here, there's loads and loads of presets. Max source high bit rate is usually a very good one to use as well, if you're just gonna get a high quality file. But say you wanted to make a video for your phone, you've got all these different settings and you can imagine what kind of phone you're gonna display it on. And there's plenty of options here, which is very, very helpful. And, and it's also useful if you're gonna compress your files just to preview it to someone and you wanna get it done quickly to show them, rather than waiting on a fully high quality video rendering out. So usually what I would tend to use is, depending where you're putting it, if you're putting it on Facebook or Vimeo, I would usually use YouTube 1080p HD. Uh, for films, I would use uh, the HD settings up here, and they are the highest quality files, so I would hit that. And then that gives me all these options down here that I can start to customize and edit. Usually you can stick to the way it is. Uh, so we'll look into the effects panel and that's if you have your finished product and you want to add one more effect to it and that'll apply it to the entire video. Uh, I wouldn't really recommend using that, but if it's, it's up to yourself, if you just made a video and you decide, oh, I want to put it in black and white or something like that, you can do that and scrub through and preview what that looks like. Let me just turn that off. So yeah, and you can also have a time code overlay, which is again very helpful if you are trying to preview that for, preview that for someone, and it means they can uh, they have a reference point for what they want uh, to refer to. And this is usually very good for if you have the workflow where you'll do your string out, export it all as one file, and then sit and watch it the same way uh, it would have been done. It's called the dailies or the rushes, which would be the director, the producer, and a couple of other crew members would watch the footage from the previous shoot and just uh, look at everything that they've shot the day before or or that morning or or whatever. And that's a, I, I guess this is a new way you can uh, create it and then it means you can take notes and for certain refer uh, for certain time codes, take notes on shots that you liked, shots that you didn't like, which is very, very helpful as an editor too when those notes get handed to you and you're working with you know, 100 hours of footage or something like that if you're in a documentary or just whatever. So yeah. In the video, you've got the same settings again that you do in the sequence settings, the, uh, the frame rate, the aspect ratio. In audio, you can change the f format, just keep it at a, just keep it the way it is uh, in the preset. It's there for a reason. It's doing, you know, it knows what it's doing. You can change the bit rate if you want. You can set it up to 320, how as you can go. But uh, you really, you can just see what that does when you start to render it out. Multiplexer, uh, ignore that. Captions, ignore that. And publish. Um, so yeah, you're actually able to, I've never used this myself, but you can actually hook this up to your YouTube Vimeo and everything to actually just upload straight away. And I would always take this, I always recommend taking use maximum render quality to ensure that you are getting the absolute best out of your image. And that's really it. Now, there's two ways uh, you can export this. You can hit export, and it'll render in the program. But if I hit uh, Q, it'll open a media encoder. And the reason people use media encoder is there's a couple of reasons. Um, say you wanted to render, and you want to continue editing another scene. Well, you can do that because this opens in a different program and renders in a different program, so it's dedicated to just rendering stuff out. And... I have not used anything anything in Media Encoder. I haven't looked at the preferences. You can if you want, you know, to change the appearance uh, and stuff like that, but it's very self-explanatory. You, you hit Q, it pops up here. You can change uh, what format and stuff you're using the same way you can in that render. You can change the name of the file, and when you want to start rendering that out, just hit start the Q. And say you add four clips, you could do four in a row, and then... Uh, it's handy if you're doing like some sort of overnight render and you can just have the videos render one after the other and you're still able to use Premiere. And the best reason to use it is because it's just faster. And the same, again, you can choose whether or not to record through your graphic GPU, your graphics processor unit, your graphics card, or your CPU. Simple as that. That's how you render. And then you can just hit play and it renders out. And it's so much faster than rendering in Premiere. And I'll let you then just go in and start editing again. So that's really it, guys. Uh, that is a workflow for a short film. And if you have any other questions about it, if there's stuff you would like to see covered in the future, let me know. If any questions, don't feel free to 
just uh, send me a message. Hope you found this very useful for editing your short films, and I hope you, you know, start creating good content through what I've said. Thanks a lot for joining me, everybody, and I'll see you again soon. Mm-hmm.